The moon is slowly getting further away from the Earth. At the moon's current rate of recession, it would have been touching the surface of the Earth as recently as a million years ago. Therefore, it can't possibly be billions of years old. And that's not even taking into account that the rate of recession was even faster in the past. At only half the distance, the moon's gravity would have caused great tsunamis. The Earth can't be billions of years old. I must admit that when I first heard this argument, I was completely unaware that the moon was receding at all. And that prompted me to investigate. In 1969, NASA put human beings on the moon. While they were there, the astronauts placed a series of mirrored reflector cubes in arrays on the surface. These reflectors allowed NASA scientists to be able to shoot lasers at the moon and have them be reflected back. This also allowed scientists to measure the amount of time required for the laser light to return. This, in turn, allowed them to give a pinpoint accurate measurement of the distance from the Earth to the moon. What they discovered is that, at its closest, the moon is about 356 thousand kilometers away and at its furthest 407,000 kilometers away giving an average distance of 384,000 kilometers eventually measurements have also shown that the moon is a little bit further away every year in fact it is actually moving away at a rate of 3.8 centimeters per year doing the math at the rate of 3.8 centimeters per year multiplied by 4.5 billion years to the evolutionist proposed birth of the planet the moon would be roughly 170 1,000 kilometers closer. It would still be more than half its distance away, measuring from its closest modern distance. Certainly nowhere near close enough to even touch the tip of Mount Everest, let alone the rest of the Earth's surface. So what about the tsunamis that would occur at that distance? I quickly realized that I already had the numbers to test that. The difference every month between the moon's closest distance and its furthest distance is roughly 50,000 kilometers just under one-third of the distance in my calculated total recession for the time the Earth has existed. Currently, there are two high tides per month one when the moon is closest, and a greater one when the moon is aligned with the sun each month. Average high tides fluctuate between their lowest each month at about 0.5 meters to its highest average tides at about 2 meters. So, if a fluctuation of 50,000 kilometers in the moon's distance only results in an average change in high tide of 1.5 meters, there really is no basis to conclude that just over three times that distance would cause tsunamis. So what about the idea that the moon's recession was much faster in the past? I mean, it's very simple. You throw something up in the air and, as it gets to a certain altitude, it slows down and heads right back down to Earth. The moon should be no different. The most up-to-date information I could find on the rate of the moon's recession through history was a 2000 paper by George E. Williams submitted to the quarterly peer-reviewed journal Reviews of Geophysics. In his study, he examined sedimentary cyclic rhythmites of tidal origin, essentially meaning sandstone, siltstone, or mudstone deposits left by tidal forces and displaying various thicknesses. He discovered that the variance indicated a recession rate of 2.17 centimeters per year at 650 million years ago. So as it happens, the recession rate of the moon was actually slower in the past and has accelerated since then by nearly half its current rate. So once again, by simply making its own assertions, you can see how creationism taught me real science. Learn more about the real science behind other creationist arguments by watching other episodes. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may be the subject of a later video. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.